so as i was telling that uh, this class is for the selenium basics so we will set up java and then selenium and then uh, we will write our first test case so i will uh, share uh, this recording on a linkedin page so for uh, configuring java after you have installed uh, the jdk you need to go through system properties so if you have my computer or this pc open so simply go to properties by right clicking it and after that you need to open advanced system settings and from the advanced system settings we will open environment variables and here we have user variables and system variables so in the system variables the one we are targeting is path this path variable so if i open this we have different variables here so if we want to set up the path for running java so we need to see that where java is actually installed so here in c program files we have this folder named java and in this folder we have this jdk java 1.8.0 update triple one and if we open it we have a folder named bin so we are targeting that bin folder so we will simply copy it then here we will add a new variable new path in the path variable put save it put press ok ok and ok and um, that's how we have uh, configured our java variable so now we could execute uh, java from anywhere like command prompt or anywhere in our system so let's suppose if i open command prompt cmd from run so the command used to check or execute java compiler is java c so if i write java c so i will see this if my java is configured any questions until now okay so first of all we need to configure java uh, java c means uh, java compiler so after uh, configuring the jdk bin path java is configured so we can do anything with java so then we will uh, download and install intellij so for intellij i am also sharing the link here okay i was uh, going to explain that so intellij is an ide to use java like uh, java is a language a programming language so we have many ide's integrated development environments to play with those languages so for java we have many ide's like eclipse net means jet brains uh, intellij and many other ides so uh, these days uh, intellij is uh, mostly used so we will use that so you may use this link to download intellij and uh, for intellij we don't need to configure anything as java 8 is already installed so that would be synced automatically so you have to download community edition like if you open this link there are two editions ultimate and community you have to download community edition because it is free for ultimate you need a license key so after we have 
it installed if we open the IntelliJ we will see a screen like this so if I click on new project and then I select Maven here in the left pane and here I can see the version selected as one the Java 8 we have just configured so I will simply click on next then I need to give a name of the project so we could uh, select a name as selenium c1 for class 1 and finish so here we have uh, a simple java maven project created so in this project we have uh, a pom.xml file which is used to facilitate uh, maven so soon we will see that how uh, we will use it what is maven uh, well maven uh, is an environment which is used for dependency injection in java so before we had to include jar files if we wanted to include any third party library let's suppose selenium is a third party library it is not uh, in java when it is installed so for using selenium we have two ways either we will use a jar we will download a jar and then will integrate it or we can use a maven dependency so with maven it is uh, pretty easy and uh, using uh, jars offline is the oldest way how many types of other than Maven, uh, sorry. Other than Maven, how many other environments are available? Other than Maven, we have Gradle as well. But uh, when we are using uh, plain Java Selenium, so we don't need Gradle. Although uh, it is widely used for Android development, and we have. Uh, and we have other dependency injection facilitators as well with other languages like with the dot net uh, framework we have NUGET and uh, like uh, different uh, languages have uh, different environments for achieving such things Sorry. Uh, so, sorry, Anupama, I can't uh, hear. Uh, can you please write? Yeah, I can. I can hear you now. Hello. It is much better. Yeah, Mark, like, this is the one of the framework in Selenium concept, right? This is very advanced topic, right? So before you publish, I'm very careful that this works. Not uh, that much advanced. Uh, uh, just give me a second. Actually, it is pretty easy, but uh, most people uh, have not explored it, so it looks uh, a bit complex. So let me show you that how maven would be used so we just need for using maven we just need to find a maven dependency so right now we are using selenium so for selenium i will simply write selenium java mvn repo zitri okay so i need a maven repository for selenium java So here we have different variants of Java Selenium. As we, go, we can see that here we have Selenium Java. So we have different variants. Some are in alpha, some are in beta. So we will pick a stable variant, not uh, any alpha or beta variant. 
so we will select the last released version so this is 3.141.59 for so i have it here i just need to copy this syntax here and here i will add dependencies so in these dependencies i need to simply copy it so after copying it we will get selenium we just need to click this button once so after we clicked it it is uh, download java selenium dependencies on the background okay so uh, the other thing we have is web driver manager we will only use uh, two dependencies for today so if we search web driver manager maven so here we will get this one io.github.bonigarcia so this is the one that would be used here we will select 4.4.3 the latest available version and then we'll copy this part and as usual we will click on this button in order to change the dependencies on backend so this is how we have added the dependencies and by these dependencies we got the things that we will use while we are coding so let's go towards the coding so in the project we have this src main and then java so we need to open this src main java in this java we will simply add a new class java class and let's write a name for it so i will write first test and enter it so after that uh, our class is created and uh, in our java class we need a main method a main method is the method that is executed so in java we cannot execute things without a main method so the syntax for the main method is public static void main and then we will pass string arguments and uh, to write a simple line in java we use system dot out dot print ln so that is the simplest java program where we are writing a line so i'm simply right clicking and running this class file so output within some seconds depending upon the system speed so here we have our output and the line is hello world so let's move forward to our actual purpose that we have installed configured and used java with intellij so we also have our first class so in this class we are going to execute selenium now so first of all we have two dependencies here one is manager and other is selenium java so first of all we will use web driver manager to set up the driver as we always need a browser's uh, driver so the old technique was to configure driver executables manually so 
that actually takes a lot of time but now we just need to write a simple line of code to do that so we will write web driver manager dot chrome driver dot setup so by writing this line we will simply set up the chrome driver on the backend and after that we could execute selenium web driver so for executing it we will simply write uh i'm sorry we have uh, java dependencies here right. um, yeah yeah like we got uh, this dependency for the web driver manager so we don't need to uh, we don't need to include any jar anymore as uh, it is doing everything on its own got it so space driver is equal to new space chrome driver so here uh, first of all we set up chrome driver and create a selenium web driver instance for that chrome driver so if we, uh, we do anything now so that should be done with the chrome browser so let's pause I am simply doing driver dot get. So here I could pass a string, which could be a URL actually. So I can simply pass www dot google dot com. So let's execute it here. So if everything uh, goes uh, correctly according to the code, so it should open a Chrome browser window and uh, Google.com into it. that's it any questions any questions until now any confusion or anything if you don't provide https uh, no, no, no it's not about error actually we need to uh, give the actual url in order to avoid uh, confusion uh, if we could open uh, google without uh, https so the, then we could open it let's pause So if we go over here, so it shows with this log that site is secured. So it depends upon the site and its protocol. So if we remove this here, and execute the same test again, so it opened so we can see the difference here that uh, this is plain google.com and here it shows a value about the ss so it, uh, it depends upon the site's behavior that how we want to open it. So we want to open it with the www.google.com so we can also try that but it depends upon the site
mostly browser handles it browser automatically adds http or https on its own but if uh, it is not uh, handled so then we need to do it on So in this case, it is uh, not handled, so it was not able to load it. And uh, we are expected to see any issue or error here. here. So it is crashed here. It was unable to resolve uh, that specific URL. So without uh, protocol, without uh, giving HTTP or HTTPS. Okay, mostly get method, it should take HTTP method. Without HTTP, it, uh, it, won't, it won't launch the URL. It won't launch the URL. Yeah. It is always uh, wise to give the complete URL with protocol. Like it, it never knows that either we want to open HTTP or FTP or anything else. So there could be any other protocol. So any other questions? Thank you. Okay. So if we open any other URL, so anybody want to suggest any login page or anything which uh, they want to automate just for the demo purpose? Facebook, okay. Oh, it is loading uh, for me. Let's see what happens with uh, a fresh window. Okay. They have localization enabled. I made it, but uh, that would be an advanced uh, level uh, locator. So let's try target someone else. Okay, so if we open this page, so we simply need to change the URL. Right. How do we identify different type of locators and how do we how we capture them during the recorded play? Uh, well. Uh, Record and play is not a good way to automate. Uh, uh, but uh, for locators, I can uh, tell simply that if you are getting the unique, so you should go for them. And if you are not uh, having unique IDs, so if you have unique class names or unique names, so that would be a best locator. And if you don't have any of them, so then uh, we need to create either CSS selectors or expats. So that would be the order in terms of performance. I can explain it uh, later. Okay, so it is simply loading the page. 
here I will do one more thing that when we initialized the driver so I will do driver dot manage dot window dot maximize so it will maximize the driver window so Chrome will be maximized automatically so after we have this URL opened so we can simply inspect it and we could see that what we have is the element yeah f12 exactly yeah this, this this specific element so here the way I told you as we will target IDs so we not a unique one this could be repeated in other fields as well so here we all will also search for the name so we don't have name a unique one we also have identifier here so if we want to uh, let's pause if we want to start using this id so the technique would be simple we need uh, first uh, we need to locate an element so we will create an element container a web element object where we could uh, store the element so here find element and uh, for finding an element we will use uh, by clause so by dot id we are finding element by its id and copying its identifier so here we are finding an element with its id and saving it in an object so after that we could use that object to do any operation with it so currently what we want to do here we want to type something here so for typing we will be sending keys. so we will call send keys and then we'll type something into it so let's pause selenium class 01 at gmail.com so we simply located an element using its ID and we are performing an operation with it. So one of the operation is the send keys where we are typing keys into the element. So let's execute it. so it has simply typed into the element so any questions anyone So our uh, next target is to click uh, the next button.
so here we have uh, now a situation where we have a randomized class let's pause if i refresh this so that class may be changed or may or after some sessions it will be changed so if we open this so let's uh, try it using the class so we will create another web element driver dot by class class name and here copy its class so after we have uh, the next button so we will simply make some operations with it so next button dot click so if we execute it now and the class name remains same so then it should be next button after typing the email so here it is failed so see if we have the same well the class name is uh, this uh, second half is changed bqz f8d this part is changed so then in such cases we cannot uh, look at using same or name so then uh, there is the actual explanation that how we know that which uh, locator would be used so here we can simply go for uh, any other locator like css selector or xpath so usually in interviews uh, xpath uh, is a challenging thing so we will go for xpath we could target this or this pan so we could uh, locate element depending upon uh, any of their property or attributes so if i simply inspect it and uh, if i want to target this pan so i can also uh, on the basis of its text property so for that can simply write these two slashes 
to start an X path. There would be tag name. So first of all, I will write uh, the format. So if anybody want to copy that format, so just uh, follow me. So here we would have a tag name. Then scare brackets starts. Then attribute name is equal to value. So that would be the format. So in that case, if I want to fill it by creating an X path, so for tag name, I will simply write span. For attribute, I could go for any attribute. Let's suppose just for the learning purpose. We have this attribute with at the rate and this value of that attribute. So if the X path is correct, so we will simply find it. Okay. So here we're not going to use this JS name property. Instead, we will use text because that is the unique. So for text, text is not any attribute here. Like we have only two attributes, yes, name or class, but text is a property here. So for calling properties, we will just write the name of the property. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, we will put uh, parentheses, these brackets. And then in the value, we will put the text. So we are finding an element depending upon its text. And we know that the element is span type. So we are verifying a span with its text. So we found one. So after we have an element, we can simply go dot xpath. So find an element by its x path and then we will give its x path. So let's try it this way. Okay, so we simply entered an email and clicked on next. So we are not using a valid email, so it would not find it. So for uh, reaching the next screen, we will simply put a valid email. Okay, so it is not allowing us to sign in, but uh, we were able to automate with what we had. So, any questions until now? Yes, what are the best practices to like, what they 
because how they the all these things I, I it is difficult for me to you know write the exact format as well so what are the best practices to learn this you know find the element and read the part and, and and replace it in the program and then my other question is what are uh, what is the uh, what is the way to read a particular error? Uh, what is the way to read? Uh, read the last one. Uh, well, uh, for a beginner, okay, for a beginner, uh, it is easy uh, to simply search the error on Google. So you will know in the beginning that uh, what is the cause of this error. Like you will, yeah. you yeah. will simply yeah. find a stack overflow post over it, where it would be explained by people, or you will find a documentation if you search over Google. So it is about, uh, it is simply about for, practice. Uh, uh, sorry, Sujata, let me answer first. So, uh, uh, for a beginner, it is easy to uh, put the exact error on Google. So, Google will show you some links where it is explained. But, but the main thing is that uh, it uh, comes with practice. That understanding an error is about the practice. Like, uh, everyone was a beginner, so th these things were... Uh, like strange and annoying at that time, but uh, once uh, someone with uh, someone is experienced with those things, so those same things are easy to understand. And about the locators, like how one can practice to write uh, expats or locators. So it is like uh, simply about uh, the way we are trying pass on the websites so if you have any website opened so you can simply try to target it by its tag let's suppose i have this site open here so first of all i could Target any. Let's pose this element. So here, this element is text area. So looks like uh, it could be the only text area on the page. So then, next path could be the easier one. Okay, but here we have some other hidden text areas. But still. If we do the find element, so it would uh, it would simply target the first uh, which is this text area. But uh, if uh, we have other options, like if we simply want to target this one, so then uh, we need to select an attribute. So that first one, which is visible, has this ID, Mavine. So then I will simply put ID is equal to So then the only unique element that uh, we were targeting is found. Hello. Yes. Okay. So, but if you want, we can have our next class on the locator techniques specifically. So then we may discuss things in detail as well.
Uh, it, 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 it is actually a great idea. You explain very well related to the configurations and we will try it at, at all level. Can you please one then explain how many how many particular or mandatory steps to write this particular set of code? Uh, what type what are the steps to write up one specific code to open up a URL or set up data? Okay. It is uh, pretty simple uh, as we have seen here. First of yeah. all, first of all, we need to configure the driver manager. So here we are uh, the Chrome driver and after that we initialize the Chrome driver and then we simply use driver.get open this URL so there are th three simple steps like this is the first one then second one and then here we have the third one so these uh, three lines of code would be used and uh, the first two lines of uh, code are reusable like once we have driver initialized so everything would be done using that driver so here here we are doing should be there so after we have driver initialized in any way so uh, then we can simply use driver.get to load a url and after that uh, we could find element any element and then could uh, play with those elements so any other questions Usually, what type of requirements we we actually cater to use Selenium? We are exploring the website or automate or open the website, right? Am I am I correct? Yeah. Well, so what, what type of requirements actually uh, in the right time frame time starting we cater? Well, any kind of uh, things uh, that we could do with the user interface of a website could be done with the Selenium like uh, if you want to open a website in the browser and then um, uh, want to fill a form on the, that specific url and then want to submit that form and then uh, want to take screenshots or gather some results so uh, like everything like uh, you can uh, type in the fields different elements like buttons or links you may select uh, different options in the drop downs such kind of things and uh, on the yeah yeah right so uh, using uh, such operations we could uh, simply uh, fill the forms as well and we could also target uh, testing activities that's for so you have an input field so where you want to check that uh, uh, alphabets are allowed or numbers are allowed or alphanumeric is allowed or some things like that so every time uh, your uh, web application is changed so you need to check let's pause 50 input fields okay so you cannot uh, simply check uh, 50 input fields every time let's pause uh, if uh, a little change is made every other day so then uh, you can automate that so those test cases would be executed and you could check if something is failed so that is not according to requirements so something is not right so you can report a bug or something like that so right, that's a good example yeah. is selenium provide us some reporting on what you guys yeah but with selenium we may integrate many recording options um, many reporting reporting uh, yeah many reporting techniques like uh, we have extend report with java and uh, test ng report and uh, j unit report and allure reports so many techniques and we uh, can simply gather uh, test uh, result sets and could uh, 
pass them to the database as well. So it's uh, upon us the that. Other type of repository would you use as a Selenium for test case? Uh, well, it uh, depends upon uh, user and the firm. Let's suppose if uh, your uh, company or software house is using uh, GitHub, so you can simply integrate uh, it with GitHub. Or if it is uh, on uh, SVN or something else, so that could be done as well. So even for Git, we have multiple options uh, today, like GitHub, GitLab, and uh, Bitbucket, and many options. So it uh, depends upon the requirement. So with Selenium, we have integrations for every. Uh, so Selenium uh, Java project could be on uh, all of them today. Uh, you got your answer? Yes, thank you so much. Very informative session. So, we would definitely like to go to the next session to, you know, enhance practices for locating the tricky elements. Sure, sure, we could do that. Uh, we will uh, simply read. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We will schedule the next one, same time, next uh, Saturday. So I will yeah, or share. You can invite individually to all these participants in, uh, individually in inbox, LinkedIn inbox, so that we couldn't miss it. Sure, sure. Thank uh, you uh, so much for your nice time. No problem. Okay. Any other questions from anyone? Yeah. So, uh, actually, I am a beginner now. Huh? So, what are the uh, means, uh, what are the uh, subjects you have to know before learning the uh, Well, uh, you simply need uh, Java installed, and uh, you uh, you should simply remember. Some lines of code in the beginning. Yeah, but uh, this is the attribute and uh, uh, relocate these all things uh, new for new elements. Uh, in, uh, I'm not reading this one. Okay, no problem. Uh, we will uh, learn uh, the lo locator techniques in the next session. So it is not uh, difficult as well. Uh, like, or you can uh, even uh, share some, you know, website. Or Sure, sure, I will. Show. Yeah, any PDF for beginner before you know the thing. Sure, I will. I will. Okay. In the next session, I will share some uh, reference. So, for the beginner, uh, Sujata, you need to remember uh, some lines of code only. And uh, with practice, uh, you will uh, explore some more things. Okay. Yes. This is Oma here. Oma. Okay. How are you, Oma? And uh, I have. Uh, I'm looking at a little advanced one for like a framework design. And, uh, no, I, I I have worked on uh, a few frameworks, but the process is uh, which one is the best one to take to automate the framework? So, uh, I think. Question uh, to have to give uh, something like that for framework design, test case design, mm -hmm. to take it through the whole process of the framework. But that becomes uh, difficult with having so many reports different, which integrates with one. So, mm -hmm. would you be able to do that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So, I think uh, you are trying to ask that uh, how a framework should be developed or uh, what. Uh, if as we have uh, several options right is it your question uh, yeah that's my question okay there are so many options and uh, uh, so many frameworks that are available and i don't know which one should i take and which one should i take and which one should i take 
we have uh, we have different sometimes feel that when we were designing a framework is uh, something which everybody is now at least uh, wants to have a uh, good good thing to have kind of a thing so, yeah yeah okay so well we have a different kind of uh, approaches for selecting a test automation framework although it is a very very answer question so but uh, uh, to answer it like uh, we have uh, data uh, driven frameworks we have uh, keyword driven frameworks we have uh, behavior driven ones or we have hybrid ones. so it uh, clearly depend upon the requirements let's pause uh, Exactly. Um, exactly. Let's pause. So, uh, do you have any, uh, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have uh, frameworks, and uh, like uh, I also have uh, a framework which I'll uh, like publish one day as a product, maybe yeah, in the future. So, um, if, if uh, my data uh, comes in the database or in the data files and I have to play with that, then uh, I could select uh, data driven framework. And for selecting uh, the data driven framework, it depends. Like, let's suppose if I am using Java, so I could use uh, JDBC or ODBC drivers to read it from uh, MySQL or SQL Server or Oracle or any other RDBMS tool or uh, f from the no sql databases like mongodb and if my data is in like excel or csv or something so then uh, we could use uh, the famous api which is apache pui so th that is about the data driven but if our data is not coming from uh, any data source and we have like uh, randomized uh, data we want to use so we could go for uh, uh, behavior driven approach as well so in that way we could simply use a behavior driven framework like uh, we have cucumber or specflow or jasmine or many other tools so cucumber is the most famous one so we could use uh, uh, simple English uh, language uh, syntaxes to do our job. So let's pause for. Yeah, uh, I have I have a little bit of knowledge on those. Uh, my question to you is: Do you have material or do you have videos uh, presented by you regarding uh, framework or a little advanced uh, areas which I can access? Uh, well, uh, I think uh, we could have that session in the near future, but uh, uh, this is the, the beginning for me, like I am presenting for the first time in many years. So, oh, very nice. I, mean, uh, I would like to uh, look at for the advanced work also. Yeah, sure, we can, we can go for that. So, any other question? Is it mandatory? Is it mandatory to be uh, to be uh, a, a good learner or to learn all these behaviors like get driven? No, it is not mandatory to learn everything. Yeah, it is not mandatory to learn everything in the first place. Obviously, you will be picking a, a, a one approach depending upon your requirement. You, you you will be focusing one in the beginning although we could create hybrid frameworks as well but like uh, it uh, will not be a start like uh, if uh, we are presenting so if uh, we want to learn uh, data driven and keyword driven and uh, behavior driven first and then and maybe we will never start creating a framework because we are learning everything first first we need to learn one thing and then uh, go with it and then we could also include other things in the framework later after our uh, latest findings thank you so much Joseph. you can you know, share your 
share your test recording on LinkedIn and write a tag every participant over there so that we don't miss this. Thank you so much. Sure, sure. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much everyone for joining. So we will uh, see each other next Saturday. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Sure, thank you very much. Thank uh, you very much. Nice you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much, Asif. I will call you soon. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye.